Today we're going to paint a peony simplified. Let's get started. Today I thought what we would do is really simplify a peony as much as possible. And uh, this is a challenge. It's taken me years to do this. I'm not suggesting that everybody do this. Some people like to uh, work petal by petal or um, anyway, there are just a variety of different ways of doing it. But I like to look at chunky shapes. So the first thing that I do is I map out where my lightest lights are. And that is what's going in there is Naples yellow. That's going to be a placeholder for me. That will remind me not to drive over these light areas. And I put above a grid, I'm going to put light colors in one column, medium colors in the middle column, and dark colors in the dark column. So there are my lights. Now I have to decide what my dark is, and that's the value finder I use there. And I wasn't sure if this was going to be my darkest dark or if it was going to be a mid-tone. And it ends up being a mid-tone, but it's a dark mid-tone. The, the, there's quite a range in the mid-tones. So I'm getting organized here and also taking a, a little bit of time to let that uh, Naples yellow dry a bit. Now I'm using my finger to find my place. and I'm looking at the darkest possible shapes. That's what I'm putting in right now with as few strokes as possible. This is on um, what, uh, Arsh watercolor paper and the brush is probably a number 12 brush. I'm not going to use a smaller brush. So there are my darkest darks which is really hard to see in the photo, but you can see it if you squint in your eyes, you can see your darkest darks. So I have my lights and I have my darks. I need to establish those in order for me to start to build a painting from here. Now I'm into midtones and I use that value finder. I'm looking to see, are these midtones staying in the midtones or are they starting to uh, drift a little bit into the dark column? They're not, they're definitely midtones. But I need the value finder in order to do that. It's, it's much harder to do with the naked eye. So now I'm putting in not, I'm putting in the darkest of what the midtones are. So that's what's going in right now. And again, I'm just looking at shape. Now I've added a lot more orange to my mixes because I want to warm things up. You know, if you paint everything with only one midtone, even though it reads as one midtone, if I paint it all with one mid-tone, it's just not going to be a very good painting. So I need to mix up a variety of mid-tones. And what I do is I use that value finder to make sure that they're the same value. Or close enough in the same value that it doesn't tip into the light column or into the dark column. And as long as it doesn't, I can play and mix up as many mid-tones as I want. And I wanted to warm it up because, uh, and by warm it up, what I mean is adding a little bit of yellow to the mix, having it, having my dark red starting to tilt toward orange here. And now it's time to build a little bit further and lighten things up again. And I'm using that value finder, checking to see, am I in the light? Yes, it is. It starts to tip into the lighter range. Boy, it doesn't look like it when you apply it to the paper. There it is. Yeah, that's definitely lighter. And you can see how orange that is, how much um, yellow has been added to the mix to warm it up. So I look at the picture and I can see that the ends of the petals tend to be light and where it starts to join the, the, the uh, stem of the flower, it tends to be darker. So I'm following that, saying to myself, light, light into dark, light into dark, light into dark, shape, light into dark, shape, light into dark. That's all I'm doing here few strokes as possible so I load the brush and you can see it's starting to build a form so it's starting to be less abstract but it's all based on that very beginning thing that I did which was putting in my darkest darks and my lightest lights and then applying mid-tones for everything else bending color either being warmer or bending color into being cooler in order to have a variety within those shapes but it's all based on shape so now I've kind of intensified the color a little bit into some pinks. I can't remember a conscious decision to do that. And you probably know this from painting. After a while, when you've been painting, especially if you're 20 minutes into a painting, you can you start to get a feel. It's, it's like a feeling. <laughs> I can't, can't even explain what it is. But that sort of informs you. And you think, oh, I, I need more color there. I need something more intense there. I, I absolutely can't explain it, but it starts to become intuitive. And that's when you're completely out of your thinking brain and into just your uh, 
into the world of shape and pattern and, and color, and which is like the happiest place to be as far as I'm concerned. Now, what's missing from this painting so far is any kind of neutrals. And when there is only color, uh, then uh, I need to apply some neutrals. Oh, I'll do that after this. First, I'm establishing uh, a background. And it's, it's, it's meant to be um, not, not specific. Because I made a decision that I wanted the attention on the flower. You know, when you look at painting, especially in realism, which is fine if you love it, you know, everything sort of gets equal attention. I like to lose edges, find edges, and kind of direct my seeing to where I decided I wanted the painting to, to be of most interest, which was just on this specific flower form. So that's looking pretty good, but now I need to make things darker. So I mixed up a dark to put in my darkest column, and I'm just reinforcing that very first decision that you saw me make. I knew it wouldn't be dark enough once I completed the painting, but I didn't know how, you know, you can't apply your darkest dark until it's relative to everything else. And there was very little to do there, but it does make the form look as if it's, uh, it, it has more depth than it did before I, I took that last step. Here's where I'm mixing up a neutral. It's very hard to see, but it's a warm gray uh, because there actually is no white on this flower. There's some lighter spots, but they're actually not white. And I needed to do that in order to unify everything. So that is how I go about painting a peony and simplifying things. And they're in bloom right now, or you can find pictures of them um, all over the internet. And go and have fun. And send me your results. It would be fun to see. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paint's wet, mask for value, mix for color. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.